Today, I'll be sharing seven lessons that I've learned as a landscape photographer, and lesson number three is the most important out of all of them. So stick around and let's jump right in. What's up y'all, it's a Project Photography, back with another video, and today, people, today. Before we get started, make sure to follow all of my socials down in the description bar below, including a brand new TikTok. But I've been photographing landscapes for the past seven years, and clearly I'm a much better photographer than I was now versus in 2016. But I've learned a lot of lessons, and today I wanna to share those with you in seven lessons. So with that being said, let's jump right into the first one and talk about why the weather doesn't really care about your feelings. Now, of course, we all want that picture perfect image where the weather is absolutely stunning, the lighting is amazing, but honestly, 95% of the time, it is not like that. And of course, weather can be an incredibly major factor in how we capture our landscape photography. It can affect the mood of the image, the composition we want to go for, and how the images overall turn out because of the lighting and the colors and so forth. And there's been quite a few times where I go out and plan a shoot at four in the morning, I go and drive out to my location that's like 50 miles away, and I get there right before sunrise and the weather is just terrible the lighting could be awful or maybe just there's a ton of overcast that i really wasn't expecting and really that's the thing about landscape photography you cannot control the weather and you have to accept that as a landscape photographer because if we're always planning and meticulously waiting for the right time of day and the right weather to be in place before we go out and shoot landscape photography then we're never going to go out and shoot because the weather will never be perfect the difference between a good and a great landscape photographer is that a great one is able to take those imperfect weather conditions and make the most out of it and still come out with amazing photos. So let's jump right into the next point that camera gear really doesn't matter. There's only one caveat to this in terms of the lenses you're using. Of course, if you're using a prime 50 millimeter lens for all of your landscape photography, it's gonna be way more difficult than you were to have, let's say a wide angle and a telephoto lens. I won't dive into the lenses in particular, but you can find a related video here. But generally speaking, upgrading your camera body or your wide angle telephoto lenses to something that is even better won't necessarily make you a better landscape photographer. Now, of course, if you had a better camera with a three-way articulating screen versus no flipping screen, it would make that a lot easier. But if you had better image quality, better dynamic range, more megapixels, of course, you're gonna come out with better images overall. But if you think that buying a more expensive camera will make you a better landscape photographer, well, you're just wrong. Because take a look at these two images. One of them was shot in 2017 with a Nikon D5500 and it's a fine photo. But take a look at this image that was shot in 2023 with a Nikon Z30. Now both of these cameras are APS-C cameras and are entry level for their respective time periods. But these two images just show you that composition skills, editing, and shooting at the right time of day are far more important than the camera gear that you have. Because the only way to actually improve your landscape photography is to get better at it and to improve your skills, which is where the third lesson really comes in. That compositions are the most important part of landscape photography and you really need to learn it. Because if you have an incredible location, incredible lighting, and really stellar camera gear, it doesn't matter if you don't have good composition skills, which is why you have to be learning it and be better at it every single time you go out and shoot. Now, don't get me wrong, it is absolutely the most difficult skill to learn in landscape photography for a few reasons. First of all, you have to know how to take so many different subject matters and elements inside of a landscape and use all of them to create the composition that you have. And the thing is that you can't just like rearrange certain parts of the elements and put it where you want because landscapes, they're just the way they are and it's up to you to capture it in the light that you want to capture it in. But once you learn it and develop those skills as a landscape photographer, then you're really able to take those boring locations and turn them into amazing photos. And if you were to take one thing away from this video, it has to be this. That developing your composition skills is the biggest difference between you and a lot of other landscape photographers. So I actually have a video up here that if you were interested in developing your landscape photography composition skills, then you should definitely check out. So let's move right on to the next lesson and that learning techniques gives you new ways to express yourself when it comes to landscape photography. And when I mean new techniques, I'm talking about things like focus stacking, how do you create an HDR, panoramas, stacking Milky Way photos, and so forth. And what I found is that if you're able to actually learn these different techniques, you're able to take them and translate them into when you're going out and shooting landscape photography, because I can't tell you how many times I've gone on location and 
There's just really not that many interesting subject matters, but I'm able to create incredible compositions because I'm able to see something on the ground that I want to use as a foreground element and boom, we have more elements introduced that create a really unique, interesting photo. You have to think of it as new tools in your toolkit and gives you that flexibility to go out and create more dynamic images and capture things in the way that you see them. So for me, I'd recommend going out and learning the panoramas, HDRs, and you know, focus stacking. And obviously, if you wanted to learn more about panoramas in particular, I have a video up here that'll show you how to do just that. So let's go on and talk about photo editing, because to me, photo editing, you know, it's not about altering, it's about enhancing. And what I mean by that is that when you're going out and shooting a landscape, you have a particular image about how the landscape should be. You know, a certain mood, a certain feel that you get when you're shooting it. But when you go back in post-production, you can think about, okay, we're gonna alter these specific physical elements, like adding in new things or removing a bunch of stuff, or even editing the photo so it looks nothing like how it looked when you actually shot it. My philosophy is that the goal of editing isn't to alter it in a way that is unrecognizable from the original location you shot at, but actually you know, changing, enhancing the colors and how everything looks so that it reminds you and gives you the same feel and aesthetic that when you were on location. Because if you look at my landscape photography, I actually don't use a lot of Photoshop at all, unless there's like certain elements here that I think need to be removed and so forth. But I'm not making these huge grand edits to make it unrecognizable from how the original location looked like. To me, I believe that nature is perfect and the world is perfect and it doesn't need us and our computers and our cameras to completely change how it looks. I think it's perfect and it just needs a little bit of enhancement here and there. Of course, knowing how to edit photos is incredibly important, but I think a lot of photographers overcomplicate it. Thinking that you know the goal is to create some incredible, breathtaking, awe-inspiring image. And of course that is the goal, but it shouldn't be the goal to the point where you're doing a complete disservice to the actual location itself. My goal is just to keep it as simple as impossible, enhance it, not alter it. Of course, that's just my philosophy, but that's something I've really taken to heart over the years because I notice a lot of landscape photographers really like to overcomplicate it and add a bunch of elements that A, didn't even exist and take out so much stuff that it's just completely unrecognizable. But that's just my personal opinion. That's what I like to stick through to. But you know, everyone has their own way of doing things. The next lesson is that you are not bad at landscape photography. Your locations just suck. And I've been shooting landscape photography for obviously the past seven years, but I've lived in Southern California my entire life. And you know, you can only shoot at the same location so many times before you become disinterested or unmotivated to go out and shoot. And I've gone back and had to revisit a lot of the same locations that I've shot at because I just don't have as many options as like around me. But there's been a lot of times where I go on those shoots and I come back with really mediocre images. And I just think like, do I suck at landscape photography? I mean, like, am I terrible? Like what's going on? Like, but honestly, I've gone and shot at, you know, national parks like week, a literal week after going out and shooting at that same location. And I come back awe inspired, incredibly motivated and loving the experience of shooting landscape photography. And a lot of it has to do with just a fresh new location, a change of scenery. And sometimes that's all it takes to rejuvenate and re-energize your love for landscape photography. So if this feels like you, try and change it up, go to a different location. You don't even have to go on a crazy expensive trip to a national park to go capture great images. Go outside of your local area and capture locations that you simply haven't shot at. And for me, if it's between going on a vacation vacation to a national park and shooting somewhere incredible versus buying a new piece of gear, I will choose the new location like nine times out of 10 because that will be the bigger difference between me capturing better landscape photography and not than a new camera lens. So with that being said, let's jump on to the last lesson and talk about how validation from social media isn't what makes you appreciate your work. It has to come from within. Now, what I mean by that is this, where you know a lot of photographers post their work on social media thinking that people are gonna be like, wow, this is amazing, get a bunch of likes and get a bunch of followers and so on, but you won't really be able to appreciate your own work if it doesn't come from you. Because I feel like a lot of creatives put so much of their value in how many likes or how many follows they get from a certain piece of art that they put out, rather than appreciating the work for what it is and loving it whether or not it gets the external validation because they just love the work themselves. I think we all fall into this trap of that, oh, we need to get the likes, we need to get the follows and so forth. And obviously coming from somebody who runs a photography YouTube channel and I have my Instagram and TikTok, Facebook, all that sort of stuff, I've come to realize that for me, 
I have to put more validation in my own work from myself than rely on other people to give that to me. Because if you put your validation, your happiness into other people's hands, into things you cannot control, you will never be happy no matter what that number is. Because at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, who are we creating work for? And for me, I'm creating art for myself, to be honest, because I just love the great outdoors. I love nature. I love everything about it. Ever since I was a kid, I would always go out and explore the great outdoors, I loved hiking and so forth. But I think as I got older, I think that social pressure of social media and oh, like you have to be this certain way and your photos have to look a certain way really like digs into a lot of people. And especially dug into me where I was so worried about the likes and numbers like, by the end of the day, like who cares really? People swipe through your post. They see it for five seconds. When it took you five hours to create this one image, they'll tap a like on it or just leave all within the span of five seconds where it took you like five hours to create this one image. So if you never appreciate your work from the start, there's no amount of likes, no amount of follows that will make you appreciate your work like you have to appreciate it yourself. And I think to me, that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I have personally learned being on social media for this long. Like, honestly, like I, I don't create these videos to get the attention. Of course, you want the videos to do well and you want your posts and your photos to do well. But for me, it's not really about that for myself. I haven't really talked about this too much, but the big reason why I'm doing these videos is because I wanna share my experiences as a landscape photographer with you guys. So that A, you can become a better landscape photographer and B, learn from my experiences. And I just feel like, you know, a lot of people get it wrong on social media. They wanna chase the follows, they wanna chase the likes. But for me, even if I didn't get that many likes or follows or whatever, it wouldn't really all that matter because I love my work for what it is and I appreciate it because, well, I just appreciate it. So. Anyways, guys, those are the seven lessons. I hope you guys appreciated this video and are able to take something away from it. Like I said, the third one is the most important. So if anything, go back and watch that part. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. What was your favorite lesson on this video? And uh, yeah, please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.